Okay, this is Dr. Matthew J. Tron. This is the third and final video of the fifth lecture in the engineering design course. Um, here's where we stopped last time, so I'll pick it up from here. Um, I am going to go back to the first slide that we looked at, uh, which is right here, just to remind you guys um, that what we're really talking about here, what we're doing is uh, down here, we're converting a customer needs statement um, into a design objectives document where a customer needs statement um, is kind of a qualitative, poorly described, um, customer-given version of the, the design problem. And the design objectives document is produced by the engineering designer, and it's a much more concise, crisp um, description of the objectives of the design process. Um, and recall very quickly that we want something that is short but clear um, and that serves uh, in a visual way to uh, allow all the stakeholders to agree on the design objective. So if I move then back to this original slide that we started on in this video, um, there are really two ways to do this. Um, the first way to organize design objectives is called um, grouped sets. Um, and so um, we find as we um, convert the customer needs statement into more quantitative design objectives, that some of those objectives have much higher importance than others. Um, and oftentimes the sub-objectives um, emerge as a way to meet the goal set up by the higher objectives. And sometimes what emerges are statements of desired means to achieve particular objectives. So you can see there begins to become a hierarchy here um, of the actual objectives and the, that are quite important and then kind of lesser objectives and then ways to address or, or solve those objectives, which um, are less important in terms of the overall hierarchy of the design process. So um, we're starting to begin to see a hierarchy that we can use um, as a, an underpinning for a method for organization. Um, so the suggestion here um, is to um, create that hierarchy by grouping objectives into level-based sets that are uh, concentrated or centered on the highest level objective. Um, so and we want to keep things simple and we want to keep things easy to understand. So typically we wouldn't use more than three levels um, at the most. And uh, recall that the idea is to get buy-in from um, all the stakeholders in the design process, but um, everybody doesn't need to be in absolute and complete agreement about um, the levels of assignment. Um, this is a working document, um, and so it, it's not the final form, um, and so everybody does need to be in absolute agreement about whether something should be in level three or level two. Um, this is just a means of kind of organizing thinking. So um, going back to that example of the chair, the client who wanted something to sit on, um, and addressing one of the, the customer needs, uh, which we determined after a, a conversation with a client was that the chair or the, the thing that the the client is sitting on has to provide adequate back support um, in additional discussion and also doing a review of the literature and understanding what the purpose and function of, of chairs are, things to sit on, um, we come up with this three-level hierarchy. So the top level um, is what the customer actually told us uh, after interrogating them a little bit more, uh, which is that this, this thing that they're sitting on has to provide adequate back support. So that's a, a level one uh, criteria in our group sets approach. Um, doing a little bit of background reading ourselves, um, we learned that OSHA, um, which is um, uh, <coughs> U.S. government um, health and safety organization, does actually have standards for office chairs, and those standards include um, some um, guidelines about providing back support. So you might actually use the OSHA standards to determine um, at least quantitatively, uh, what the chair has to do um, in terms of, uh, of achieving back support. Um, and one of those things is including a lumbar pad for lower back support. And it turns out in our discussion with a client that they mentioned the same thing. They actually have lower back pain um, and they would like um, some sort of pad or some sort of um, supportive device um, to help improve their lower back pain. So those two um, I placed in level two under providing adequate back support. So you can see these um, are sort of sub-objectives. They are objectives in and of themselves, but they're essentially the means uh, level two to achieve um, the larger, broader goal 
uh, in level one of providing adequate back support. Um, and then down here at level three, um, in <coughs> talking to the customer a little bit more, um, the customer might have told us, oh, well, I, I want something that's, that's elastic. I want some material. I sit in the chair and the chair conforms to my back. Um, and so this is really put in level three because this is a means of achieving level two, which is a means of achieving level one. So this is kind of a specific solution um, to this particular design problem. And remember, if we go back to the very beginning, um, it is possible to have uh, whatever the, the current working uh, theorized solution to a particular design problem. It's okay to actually have that in a design objective document. So, so this is really how I would lay out um, the information that I gathered from the customer based on interactions um, and my own research on um, you know, how to make you know, good chairs that keep people's backs healthy. Um, so that was one method. The other method of organizing design objectives um, is a, a tree-based approach, a branching approach. And so what I show here on the top um, is that previous group sets approach that I was just showing you before with the three levels. And then this uh, is a conversion into a branched approach. Um, so over here, I have my level one objective, which is provision of adequate back support. And then my level two objectives are here. There are actually two of those, um, the lumbar pad and meeting OSHA standards. And then those, of course, feed into level one and, and help support level one. And then finally, my level three uh, here, form-fitting material. Now, it's important uh, how these are, are connected. Um, OSHA does not necessarily mention in its standards that you need a form-fitting material, but a lower back lumbar pad does suggest some sort of form-fitting um, material or some sort of pillow or something like that that conforms to the body. And so I made this connection here between form-fitting material and lumbar uh, lower back support. Um, and I have not made a connection between this guy and OSHA because those two are, are not necessarily connected. So you can see how these different design um, goals, how these different objectives relate to each other um, through the, the treat approach. Now, <clears throat> remember, um, we talked about um, asking the client what, why, and how questions. And here we can see kind of how those questions map onto this tree approach of organizing um, the design objectives in that as you go from your right to your left, you move more in the direction of how you're going to achieve the particular design objectives. Whereas if you move from the right to the left, you're really addressing the why, which is the bigger picture of what are the design objectives and why are those design objectives important. So these are how those what, why, and how questions ultimately inform um, your organization of the design objectives into a form that's easy for you as the engineer to understand, but also um, is clear, succinct, and understandable to your client. Okay, um, so that's the end of this series of uh, lecture slides, uh, the end of lecture five. Thanks for your attention, uh, and I will see you next time.